Welcome to the More Than Mothering podcast, episode number six. I'm your host, Crystal Hardstaff from The Gentle Counselor, where I specialize in attachment theory, perinatal mental health, and gentle parenting support. Today's episode is a recording from a live that I did on Instagram with one of my very good friends, Tiffany from Inspire, Learn, Teach, and we are talking all about the duality of motherhood. In this conversation, you'll hear us talk about how we can love it and we can find it hard. We can enjoy playing with our children and dislike pretend play. We can wish for our children to sleep through the night and miss the cuddles when they do. We can be snappy some days and be working to be more gentle the next. There is so much we can be as mothers. This journey isn't linear. There is space for the positive and negative. In my chat with Tiffany, we talk about what we can do. And one of the biggest takeaways that you'll hear is accepting this because being compassionate with ourselves will allow the space for the duality of motherhood. If you would like to join us on the conversation, make sure to find this post over on our Instagram at the gentle counselor or at inspire.learn.teach. So I was saying that we're talking today about the duality of motherhood and how important it is that we mm-hmm. can have two sides to every coin and we can hold space for both of those. And that's about as far as I got. Okay, cool. Great. So you just started. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because so, we did a really great post on it the other day, kind of starting the conversation. And then it's funny because Tiffany and I have been sending each other DMs because we're noticing other people have started making their own posts. I think it's coincidental. I don't think those people saw our post, but I'm like, oh, good. Everyone's having this much needed conversation. That's it. And I think it is a needed, con- and it removes some of that mum guilt, that shame that I've got to do everything or be everything, can love everything yes. all the time when we recognize we can hold space for everything at once, mm-hmm. the negative mm-hmm. and the positive. Yeah, because I think we all feel like we're constantly juggling and constantly like shifting the different hats that we wear. So it's kind of just taking that perspective and also being mindful of our language. I think language is really important when we talk about our struggles because I'm sure a lot of us can relate to when we've felt really like invalidated and dismissed when we've tried to share what's hard about parenthood because often what has happened and let me know in the comments if you've experienced this as well is that you'll get some offhanded remark about like oh but they're so cute or Mm. oh I thought you wanted to always be a mum or something like that as if your struggle is invalid because like it was your choice as well to have kids or or something to that effect yeah and that um, yeah, you're, the, you're so lucky you have them. And it's like, yeah, yeah I am lucky. Hey, you should be grateful. Yeah. And this is hard. Yeah, yeah. I've had two hours worth of sleep. Like, that doesn't make that easy. Mm. Doesn't matter yeah. how cute they are. Two hours worth of sleep is hard. Yeah. And, and, like, that's it. It's, like, full stop. Like, you don't actually need to fix my problem for me. You don't need to talk me out of what I'm feeling. I just need you to be with me when I'm sharing this with you because it sucks. And I don't think many of us feel like we have many people to begin with that we can share this with, that we can have these conversations with because we're so scared of being judged. Yeah. And that if I find parenting hard, does that mean I'm not a good mom? Yeah. Like it all does... comes back to I'm a bad mom. <laughs> Yeah, and then they, that comes back to the guilt and the shame that, mm. you know, mm. we're meant to have meant to have children and then it's meant to be natural and then it's meant to be easy because yeah. of all that. And then this, if I say that it's hard and that I say that it's difficult and that I'm exhausted mm. or I'm struggling, am I then not capable? Am I then not yeah. good? And then it brings the guilt in and then I feel guiltier because I should love every moment. And every Mm. moment should be amazing. Yeah. I was going to say, there's that word, should. I know. I notice using the word should, immediately stop. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is one of the best practices you can do is immediately stop and think, huh, I just shoulded myself. (laughs) (laughs) Like, seriously, think about it. Because every time you do it, there's something linked to it or whatever you just said that is going to be shame or guilt based. So every time you notice the word should stop and take that minute to reflect on 
what is actually happening and what you just said to yourself or what someone else said um, and get a little bit curious about where that's coming from. Mm, because I think for me and personally, every time I say I should love motherhood or I should be good at this or I should find this easy, it's a I script that them. I picked up somewhere along the line of mm -hmm. my interpretation mm -hmm. of childhood and motherhood yeah. and it's not making it easier and yeah. it's not allowing me to feel the realm of motherhood. Motherhood isn't just sunshine and roses and unicorns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I also wonder if you feel that similar to what I feel, which is like as professionals, I also feel like we do it a little bit worse in that sense because we're like, I should know what I'm doing here. Like I should be doing this differently or something. And I have, honestly, this is a big um, topic that I have with clients as well. And what I find really helpful to think about is where did the story of what a mother should be come from? So have a think about like, what did you think before kids you were going to be like as a mom? What did you think mother Mary was Poppins. going to be like? Because the biggest thing is that we never saw our mom's struggle. There's always this expectation that mothers should suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how were we ever supposed to know how hard it really is when anything you watch like tv shows movies even just watching your own mom like mary poppins style right yeah never showing them getting triggered or mad for whatever reason just like perfectly kept houses just and make come out with a song and, instead yeah, yeah just seems it just seems so easy and just wonderful and like worth it all the time i've got sound of music like just break out in song at every <laughs> difficult point and that will make it all better <laughs> that's a, that would be a lot of songs throughout the day. i'm not very good with my songwriting for that but it is that perfect motherhood myth that we need to be perfect that it needs to be easy and great but then on the other side i find the other side of this argument is that motherhood's hard motherhood's hard motherhood's hard and we just keep saying that that there is yeah. beauty in it too yeah. and that's the end yeah. with that space for both we can say yeah this is a myth we're not perfect it is hard but we can also say this mm. is an amazing journey this is magical it is amazing like i want to use the word amazing again i'm using the same word twice but that it is something special and yeah and we can hold space for both of those things exactly like becoming a mum, even though it I can list all the way it's been hard and difficult. It's still been the most transformational thing I've ever gone through in my life. And it's brought out so much good, like a big part of my healing journey as a cycle breaker. And, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this is because of our kids. And it's mm -hmm. not because of them as in like, Oh, I have to do this for, for them. It's I'm also choosing to do this for me. And there's that yeah. end again. We can have both coexist at the same time. It doesn't actually have to be one or the other. And you just made me think, um, the kids and I have been listening to this podcast that has like more folklore or like old school stories called Circle Round. And the yeah. one we listened to today, it was talking about this actually, but like not like this specifically, but I thought, oh, what funny timing to listen to this. And then our chat today. And basically, long story short of it was there was something about a queen had sent off three people for a mission to find something that would make happy people sad and sad people happy. And, I, and I'm listening to this. I'm like, gosh, what's the answer going to be? Like, I can't even think of anything. And then what ended up happening was it was the phrase, this too shall pass. Oh. And I know that we all say that about when it's hard to make us feel better but then I was like, how interesting is the end of the other way around? Like how we get sad that our kids are growing up so quickly, mm -hmm. for example. And I was like, wow, that was really powerful. This too shall pass is an end. It can make mm -hmm. us feel happier if we're feeling down and it can actually make us feel down if we're feeling happy because this too shall pass. Like when they're cute little babies or cute little toddlers or whatever yes we're just out of that newborn mm. stage and i miss it yeah yeah so let that and one then, a little bit <laughs> oh i know but then also too 
I'm also excited at the same time, excited because she's trying to walk and she's moving. Yeah. We're dropping night feeds. Very excited for that, but also a bit sad for missing some of those cuddles. Uh, yeah. It and is it's just thing. that I think too, part of the difficulty in motherhood is constantly going between. It's like Whitlock. She's going between this good, yeah. the bad, the good, the bad, the good, the bad. But also not wanting to discredit or take away from each that you can sit in the joy for a bit and watch them crawl or do something new and celebrate that and sit in it and not just go oh now it's gonna go like not adding that but straight away sit in it and enjoy it and then you can sit for a little bit in the you know what i need an extra coffee today yeah yeah i totally get what you're saying it's really hard because every moment and every day can look really different like mm -hmm. you, you don't wake up feeling great every day you don't wake up having 100 percent energy like full tank every day so it's so easy to sway between either of the extremes yeah, yeah. and not and kind of almost set up shop there for a bit rather than go mm -hmm. I need to find this middle ground where I can accept this and accept this at the same time. Yeah. Because, yeah, otherwise you do feel like you're doing this all day. Yeah. And you're kind of dismissing yourself in a way. I think it's not even just other people's comments that dismiss our positive and negatives about motherhood. Because, you know, when you say, oh, I love the baby stage, I go, oh, just you wait till they're two. Yeah. Just you wait. Yeah. So we dismiss the happy and the sad to each other but we also do it to ourselves mm, definitely definitely and i think the word you're touching on is pretty much the answer to it right is it's acceptance acceptance doesn't mean you have to be particularly thrilled with either outcome it's just that you're accepting in that moment of this is just how it is right now and with mm -hmm. that comes knowing the whole like this too shall pass thing right whichever direction that's going to look in um so if it's the this too shall pass in the sense of feeling feeling sad that something's going to end or or change that's where like gratitude really comes through and you can really sit and enjoy that and then the other side of this too shall pass is sometimes exactly what you need to just survive like when it's really hard and you're really at the wit's end mm -hmm. and none of that makes or none of that is a judgment on our parenting mm. like none of that makes you a good mum None of that makes you a bad mum. It's all emotions and stuff within yeah. us. But that doesn't mean that's who we are. Yeah. I think I read something too that was like, your parenting isn't defined by a single moment. Mm. And I love that because it's also then my journey as a mother isn't defined by a single moment or a single season yeah. of something being yeah. hard or something being easy. It just is. My parenting is defined by a lot of moments mm. and, and it looks so different at each stage like being mm -hmm. a mother of a baby is different to being a mother of a toddler being different to a mother of a school-aged child being different to a mother of a teenager and then being different to being a mother of an adult like there's so yep. many different stages of what mothering actually looks like with what we do and what we say but the, and then I was gonna say but so I even change my language when I can and then also how we experience that those people like I am very different person I'm a very different version of myself between baby toddler etc and I'm still learning who I am as my child gets older there's versions of me I haven't even met yet yes it's a cycle and it keeps it keeps changing and adapting as time goes on yeah I think that's where the concept that it's a journey come, mm. really comes in because yeah. it's not a static I'm gonna bake a cake I'm going to say some nice things to my kid and we're going to play and I'm a good mum, full stop, end of sentence. That's not how it works. And it's the same as if you have a bad day, you're a bit snappy, things don't go to plan, there's no nap, I'm a bad mum, end of sentence. Like it's mm -hmm. not how it goes. And I think mm -hmm. when we don't recognise that duality in parenting, that we can have the positive and negative, then we feel like everything's end of sentence. Yeah, yeah. Because it's really easy to feel like you're in the pit of it and you're still falling, right? It's really easy to feel overwhelmed and like you're drowning and you're like, I literally can't get out of this. And I also think that's partly because we're kind of seeking someone else to mm. like 
get us out of it for us. And I definitely think that there's a whole other discussion to be had around that. And what's hard and why it's, we're struggling so much is that because we don't have that, we don't actually have people around us like we used to. Like we are really lacking true support. And now we essentially have to learn how are we supposed to get ourselves out of this when there's all of this other stuff going on. And I think some days we'll feel like, oh, I can do this a lot more than other days. And that's where self-compassion is really important to mm -hmm. have compassion for yourself on those hard days and then to have compassion for yourself when you weren't able to make that different choice on your hard days and you yeah. were like really in it and then you ended the day just feeling like, awful so like the number one goal all around is always going to link back to self-compassion and being kind to ourselves because yeah and back to what i think you said right at the start when you go to someone and say hey i've had a rough day bedtime for us took over an hour last night i've had a rough up like evening and instead of going oh it would be better or it's okay it could be worse wait till they're three, like all that sort of stuff. When someone actually just says, you know what, bedtime took an hour, saying that must have been tiring. Yeah. Are you that, okay? That must have sucked. <laughs> yeah. Like just those little words. And then too, I felt myself saying just then in saying it, going, oh, but it wasn't too bad. And trying mm -hmm. to dismiss the fact that it yeah, took an you're hour. Yeah, you yourself. Mm. Yeah. And not doing it to ourselves, but not doing it, to our friends because I think sometimes our friends reach out more than what we realize in motherhood or people that we yeah. meet down the street try and they'll yeah. say oh yeah I'm really tired and we go oh but aren't the newborn snuggles just cute mm. and we kind of dismiss you know and it can just be the person down at the coffee shop saying it and it's that because we don't have that village which is what you're saying they're kind of saying can you just tell me that I'm trying my best or that I'm doing my yeah. best and yeah you know that it is hard at this point and just sit with me for a minute. Yeah. Rather and it's because than just people are so it. uncomfortable with people that are uncomfortable. Like it's like a whole other thing where so many people are just not okay with anyone being sad or upset or mm. angry, which is why people tend to jump straight into problem solving mode. Cause we just want to <laughs> fix it. We want to make you happy. We want to make you okay, but it doesn't even happen in the way that you need it. I was just thinking my daughter called me on it the other day because the baby was crying. I was like, can you please just stop crying? I'm trying to get dinner. And she came and went, Ma, she's allowed to cry. And I was like, yep, she is allowed to cry. <laughs> Very valid. That's and so I good. think we're trying to teach that to our children and we want our mm -hmm. children to know that. But then we don't give ourselves the permission or give other parents the permission mm, mm. around us that we know and I think of the mums that I've met or the, how many times I've been a bit you know dismissive of those feelings by oh we'll get better yeah it's okay they're cute totally. rather than just go yeah that really is tough yeah and you know what I'm sure I've done it too I'm sure if you looked at any Facebook groups you would see posts of me doing that exact same thing because I mean, it's hard, right? Because it's well-intentioned because you don't want someone to be struggling. Obviously we don't wish these struggles on anyone. It's just that not everyone is equipped the same, whether you're equipped with the same finances, the same privilege, the same, whatever your version of village is, even the same mental health, all those things are actually a place of privilege, right? You are privileged if you have good mental health and you feel like you can't relate to any of the discussions about struggling with motherhood. If you are literally someone that's like, I enjoy every second, and then you're going to have that place of judgment come through because you truly just lack that understanding because you haven't gone through it, right? That's a place of privilege. Mm -hmm. And that's not many times that that will happen because I would also argue that that in itself is someone like not allowing themselves to acknowledge the end but that's a whole other thing right and it and it's just it's it's one of the things isn't it we're not we when the way we talk to each other socially is very different to what we're actually needing yeah and there's this there's a fine line between i think this encouragement 
of you've got this, you are enough, you can do yeah. this, we're together, like, and dismissing. Mm. Like, there, it is a yeah. fine line between, yeah, sit with it for a minute and then some encouragement. It is a season, yeah. we'll get through it, da, 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 to, oh, don't worry about it, she'll be right, mate. Like, yeah. that complete. And also, we're taking away from people their own inner know knowing. Like, mm. if someone's struggling, they know that they're struggling. You don't have to tell them that they're struggling either. You don't actually need to give them answers because they already know. They've probably already worked on it as well. Or just in that moment, they weren't looking for any more, like, solutions because they've already been on Google all night looking at everything anyway. Yeah, usually at 3 a.m. Googling every yeah. possible thing wrong with me or yeah. my children. And if you're watching this and you're like, oh, man, I think I've done that too, where I've just maybe accidentally dismissed a, a friend, remember the end. So do both. Do both acknowledging how they must be feeling and validating their experience of how hard it is. And if you want to share, like, tips or advice, you can do it more from a place of, like, what worked for you rather than feeling like you're telling someone else to do. That's a little bit different. Or if you want yeah. you to give them some encouragement as in, like, what have you already tried? Like, I'm sure you've tried so many things that must be super frustrating. Like, let me know if you need any other tips, but I'm here for you. If you need to message me at 3 a.m., like I'm also up or whatever it is, you know, like that's a different way of offering help if needed, but then also respecting because they might set a boundary of like, I just need you to listen. I've started and I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not good at it, but I've started really trying within my friendship saying, do you want some tips of what worked with my girls? Yeah. Do you want some things, and not from a professional standpoint, but do mm. you want what's worked in my family, which is different mm. to my professional knowledge? Or I might say, do you want, you know, some of that professional knowledge and ask them what they want? Or do you just want to complain and we'll yeah. sell the kids on eBay? Like, that's yeah. okay too. But, yeah. like, where, where are we going here and what do you want out of that conversation? And mm. sometimes I'll catch myself texting back because it's always a 3 a.m. text with advice and going, oh, no, delete. Do you want some tips? Yeah, yeah. And send that first rather than jumping, as you said, into that problem solving because it mm -hmm. could just be we're messaging because we're both up at 3 a.m. and that's yeah. tough. And on the flip side of that, if you are that other person, learning to say, hey, I don't need any tips right now. I really just need a listening ear. I need to vent. So, mm. like, both sides can actually help promote this conversation to flow a bit better so that – our friendships can feel a bit more meaningful and reciprocated as well, like a two-way street. Yep. Mm. And I think then, you know, we talked about that friendship. It's when I get some of those comments then from people I don't know or the person down the coffee shop. I, For me, the biggest part of that is understanding that they're either well-meaning, coming from a place of love, yeah. Yeah, and that I don't want to cry and have a deep and meaningful right now in the shop, so just walk away. Yeah, <laughs> like rather than go, oh, they didn't, you know, they dismissed my feelings. Yeah. They said, oh, we'll just wait till they're two, whatever. Just breathe. You can walk away. Like you don't yeah. know this person. You don't owe this person anything. Mm -hmm. You don't know owe them an explanation. You don't need to. You can just smile and say, have a good afternoon, and yeah. move on. Yeah. And that's where and, it comes to the whole, like, is it true or untrue? Or is mm -hmm. it helpful or not helpful? And you can apply that to not only the way you talk about yourself or the thoughts that are going in your mind, but also to people around you. And most of the time, people are genuinely trying to be helpful. And there are people that will still argue, well, they shouldn't. And it's like, okay, but we can't change every single person in the world in one day. This is a shift that is going to start with us and going to start within our homes. And having conversations like this, like everyone listening to this live today is going to take something away from this chat. In fact, if you're one of those people that's been here from the beginning, let us know in the comments below before we wrap up, what's like your biggest takeaway that you've had from this live, just touching on this topic of duality of motherhood. Yeah, because it is not changing everyone else. It is changing our perception of it, our acceptance of it. And as yeah. you said earlier, that compassion for ourselves um, as well because it starts here. So we get our children, like my daughter, saying the baby's allowed to cry. Mm. Like that's then where the change happens and it's not going yeah. to happen to the, with you know, the sweet old lady down the road who just wants to look at the baby. 
yeah. and says something that might not be as kind, but is literally just enjoying your child. Yeah. And also we need to remember that that older mums, as in mums who have grown adult children, actually do have some wisdom for us. And what they give us is the mm -hmm. hindsight that we haven't learned yet. Yes. So yes. I honestly think as much as it sucks sometimes when they make those comments of, it doesn't last forever as much as it sucks. They're, they're right. Like if you were to look at it percentage wise, we only have our kids this little for like what, three to 10 to 15%. It's not, a, it's not a lot. It feels like a lot when you're in the depths of it, but it's actually not. And I can totally see us having the flip side of this conversation, Tiffany, when we're older, <laughs> like, Oh, I wish I could go back. I could go back to newborn stage when I say that right now because I got a full night's sleep last night. Nice. Um, but if you'd asked me four months ago, do I ever want to go back to that newborn stage, I would just say, no, thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, see, we're on the other side where we're preparing to want to do that again. And it's a very hard thing <laughs> to want to do again when you've done it twice and now you really know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what you're in for. Yeah. And I yeah. just... And to even, you know, saying to people, oh, do you know what you're in for? Do you know how hard it's going to be? Yeah. No one really knows how hard it's going to be. Yeah. And it's going to be different levels. Mm. No. And it's different levels of hard with every kid. Yeah. And that's the On end again. Even yep. if planning to have more children, I can have that end. Of, I know it's going to suck and I'm going to be tired. And I still want to have another baby. Like, I still want to add to our family. Like, thinking long term. Like, who do I see around the dinner table kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Well, thanks it's so, so much many for having this chat, Tiffany. I can see that a lot of people have joined us. So I'm curious to hear what people say. So you can send us a mm. message. Um, I feel like we're going to have to like do a round two on this chat. Yes. I could talk this for days. Yeah. I've got to head off now because I've got some exciting business to do. I'm checking Ooh. out a possibility of one of the places for the mom's mental health summit Ooh, in October. that so, is exciting so, yeah i might share pictures it depends because i don't know what i'm walking into <laughs> it's really nice i'll share pictures i am very so excited for this having spoken now twice like i cannot wait to see what you do with yeah. it next it's going to be so great we've got so much going on behind the scenes planning it but it's like all joyful and there's another yep. bit of reality of motherhood, right? With the end, when you're a business owner and planning things, and it's like stressful and, and, and exciting. Yes, Not I feel that with my rebrand. It's exciting mm. and stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today, everyone.